Hi everyone, this is Tevi live from Room 114. Happy April Fool's Day. So let's begin with the Korean War Guided Notes Part 1. And to get us through this um, next few days, guys, the main idea is how the Cold War spreads to Asia. And so fill in that first section there, that events in Korea and China. So guys, two places in Asia we're going to look at. Korea and China brought about a new attitude towards Japan and sent American troops back into battle less than five years after World War II had ended. So guys, the first thing we're talking about to um, understand the Korean War is this Chinese Revolution. And so for this next slide, I, I helped you out with some, some of this spelling. So guys, put down during World War II, the communists in China had suspended their civil war against the nationalist government. Um, that was done, you know, in order to resist the Japanese occupation. Um, and so, guys, in China, the communist forces um, were led by, here's his name, guys, Mao Zedong. So make sure you guys fill it in for communists. And then let me just go back to, um, here's the nationalist leader, guys, Chiang Kai-shek. So fill that in for nationalist forces and, and um, their leader's name. All right, guys, we finished with A. So on to B, guys. So in order to prevent put down a communist revolution in Asia. Uh, the U.S. sent the nationalist government two billion dollars in aid beginning in the mid-1940s. Um, but they squandered it and they were not very organized. Um, so by 1949, the communists had captured the capital, Beijing, and uh, support guys for the nationalists had declined. So on the slide, guys, is some good background on Chiang Kai-shek. Um, where he was, remember, in southern um, and eastern China, definitely relied on the U.S., um, struggled with uh, post-World War II inflation, um, and was kind of seen as a weak leader. Um, but, you know, on to Mao, um, he was highly motivated, had a very experienced guerrilla army, so he was northern China, um, definitely relied on aid from the Soviets, and definitely attracted peasants with his promise of land reform. All right, guys, we'll get on to C in just a moment, but this kind of reviews, guys, that, you know, that here's the Civil War right here and that in, in how we supported the nationalist side. Um, he did continue to tax the peasants, um, and Mao saw this as a rallying point, you know, to get more support. Um, he definitely made these promises for a better life, um, and there was uh, rampant corruption um, on, on uh, Chiang Kai-shek's side. So guys, for letter C, in August of 1949, put down the U.S. State Department discontinued aid to the Chinese nationalists. So again, guys, this group of defeated nationalists then fled to a small island of Taiwan. Uh, the communists then established, guys, fill in the name of their country, the People's Republic of China in October of 1949. And so, guys, this side, slide kind of reviews um, the next section. So, guys, put down for D, China's fall to communism shocked Americans. In September of 1949, um, you guys can put down also that the Soviet Union also announced that uh, they had successfully tested their first atomic weapon. And then in early 1950, the People's Republic of China and the Soviet Union, guys, signed a treaty of friendship and alliance. Um, but lastly, guys, for D, many Western leaders feared that China and the Soviet Union would support communist revolutions in other nations in Asia. So this policy of containment did not work. Here's just a little quick review. Um, you know, they were accused of not being tough enough or not giving enough aid. Um, a lot of Red Scare begins in the America we'll look at as an, a future uh, screencast. Um, and, uh, you know, Taiwan turns into this safe haven. 100 miles off the coast of China. So, you know, what is the move for the U.S.? So to sum up, guys, this Chinese revolution under letter E, guys, put down that the U.S. kept formal diplomatic relations um, with only the nationalist Chinese in Taiwan. So they completely cut off their ties to the People's Republic of China. Um, guys, the U.S. also used its veto power in the U.N. Security Council um, to keep the... Um, People's Republic of China out of the United Nations. So, it, you know, it completely um, severed ties. So this just creates an ongoing tension in Asia. So we're now going to go on to um, looking at new policies in Japan and then the beginning of the Korean War. 
So guys, as we look at the beginning of the Korean War, I want you to know how things also change for Japan. So under number two, new policy is in, in Japan, uh, letter A, guys, the Chinese Revolution um, put down, brought about a significant change in American policy toward Japan. Um, at the end of World War II, guys, General Douglas MacArthur had taken charge of occupied Japan. His mission was to introduce democracy and to keep Japan from threatening war again. Um, once the U.S. lost China as its chief ally in Asia, it looked to help Japan um, industrialize and have a rapid recovery after the war. So as we see a pattern here, guys, in the Cold War. So just how we viewed West Germany as the key to defending um, all of Europe against communism, we too saw Japan as the key to defending Asia against communism. So fill that in for number two. So guys, turn to your page two of your guided notes, and now the Korean War begins. So this is kind of a neat slide. Um, take a look over here on the right side, um, and just watch the, um, the colors change, um, going back and forth between the north and the south, and the spread of communism. So um, there is a nice uh, YouTube clip here um, that you know shows this um, slide and, and how the, the color changes. You're welcome to um, find that in your own browser. Um, so um, it's from uh, Jamie Johnson in color. So it's almost done. I had to just make sure you guys saw the whole thing from 1950 to 1953. Um, oh, and there it goes again. So that's now we actually have um, showing the. Uh, some of the things we looked at today on your map. So let me pause it. It's pretty cool. I probably could watch the rest of it, but I don't want you guys to have too much homework. So let's get into the notes. All right, guys. So for letter A, at the end of World War II, American and Soviet forces entered Korea to disarm the Japanese troops stationed there. Um, the Allies divided Korea at the 38th parallel of latitude, the Soviets controlling the north while American troops controlled the south. So fill that in for letter A. And as the Cold War began, guys, talks to reunify Korea broke down. Um, so you guys put down a communist government was organized in the north while an American-backed government um, controlled the south. Yet both governments claimed authority over Korea, and border clashes were common. So tension begins to mount, guys, as the Soviet Union provides military aid to the North Koreans, who quickly build up an army. Um, and on June 25, 1950, the North Korean troops invade the South, driving back the poorly equipped South Korean forces. So here, the next slide, we see the combat begin. So here's just some bullets to kind of review what we're talking about um, as they, you know, cross over the 30th parallel. Um, the South Koreans quickly um, have to retreat, and they go all the way back to the southern part of the peninsula. Um, you guys put on your map today called, uh, it's a port city called Pusan. And so President Truman has to quickly order a UN sanction. He has to ask the United States to recommend a commander for its forces. So who do you think he picks, right? Let us see, guys. Truman saw the communist invasion of South Korea as a test of the containment policy, and he ordered um, the U.S. naval and air power um, forces into action. Um, he then called on the U.N. Um, to pledge their support. So here, guys, support would mean, you know, U.N. troops. Um, so, you know, MacArthur is obviously picked to lead. Um, he's um, the senior uh, commander. Um, so Truman also orders MacArthur to um, send his American troops from Japan to Korea, so, you know, to act as reinforcements since the South Koreans are doing so badly. So here's a great picture, guys, of uh, General Douglas MacArthur. I don't know if you guys remember, but during World War II, he, you know, he was humiliated at the Bataan Death March and then, um, you know, said, I shall return. Remember when he was evacuated to Australia? And then he does make his reappearance back um, into the Philippines in the Battle of Leyte Gulf and in the island hopping campaign and, you know, takes back the Philippines. So here he is now. He's been taking care of uh, occupied Japan and now he's needed in Korea. All right, guys, so we're almost done. We're on to the last section there, letter D. So guys, put down the Americans and South Korean troops were driven back into a small pocket of territory near the port of Pusan. 
Um, so put down in quotes, guys, it's called the Pusan Perimeter. Um, so the troops stubbornly resisted the North Korean onslaught, buying time to wait for MacArthur's reinforcements from Japan. So on September 15, 1950, um, MacArthur ordered a daring invasion behind enemy lines at the port of Inshan. We put that on our map as well. Um, so guys, this took the North Koreans fill in by surprise. And with it, within weeks, guys, they um, had to retreat back across the 38th parallel. Truman then gave the order to pursue the North Koreans beyond the 38th par parallel, right, and go north. And he did. He went all the way, guys, we filled this in on our map as well, all the way to the Yalu River, um, which is the border of China. So guys, I'm going to pause here because we're going to do another screencast tomorrow on how China enters the war. And then there's also trouble between Truman and MacArthur. And, um, and we'll look at the results of the Korean War. But, um, you know, here's a picture of um, the Inshan mud flats at low tide and some inf information about MacArthur's invasion um, and how it's surrounded by these erratic tides that create havoc with incoming ships. So guys, this is Tevi signing off. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I hope you guys all do your homework so we can enjoy our movies this week. Bye guys.